So this section is about block of polymer phase behavior, and probably the phase behavior um, can be well represented by uh, phase diagram. And uh, this is a textbook phase diagram, and they use a little different notation, so I'm going to delete this and change it into the chi n. Okay, so chi n is a, a more conventional notation because textbook use the number of repeating unit or segment uh, as a n not not as an n but as an x. So, I, but I want to use a more conventional notation. And if you look at that, this phase diagram is shown in the x-axis is a composition. So this is a fa and known as a volume fraction of an a. And then this is a this is a chi n, which is a measure of degree of segregation. Okay? And then now you see that uh, this is a, when you have here this position. This is a, what is called the critical chi n. So critical chi n. It is known as 10.5. Okay, and and also this one is uh, 0.5. So. Uh, at the symmetric condition where they are like to phase separate uh, the most and uh, the uh, chi n uh, uh, for the lowest uh, chi n value for the block of polymer. This is a particular, the, has to be a die block. This is a die block only. For tri block, it's became more, uh, you need a more higher chi n value for say, phase separation, a micro phase separation or order structure formation. And so 10.5 is for the die block only. And you can recall that uh, the chi n critical was 2 and for the phase separation. That was for the blend, right? And then here n means a uh, molecular weight of each blend in, in, in here, whereas uh, die block, chi n, critical is 10.5 for AB die block. So it is, uh, for the die block, it is, uh, you need a much higher degree of uh, segregation for achieve the phase separation. Uh, just a uh, chi n about 2 is good enough for the blend for phase separation. So that because of the intrinsic, uh, the chain architecture, which is a chain are kind of tied together as a AB die block, and because of this unique chain architecture, uh, they do n they they want to phase separate, but they have to go uh, side by side together. So as a as a molecule, and so that's that's why you you need a higher degree of segregation for the phase separation. And as far as uh, in uh, this notation, this is an Decreasing temperature, right? So he, this is using the notation or concept about chi is an inversely proportional. So this is essentially the way that you can you can think about it is this way is a heating. Okay. So when you heat it up, so for example here, uh, for, from here you, you are in the cylinder phase, and then you want to go through the BCC phase, and eventually you go to the disorder state. With a lamella, you have going through this, this lamella to the disorder state. So, uh, in there are uh, four different uh, phases that has been discussed, and this is actually the phase diagram above is uh, made by the uh, Mark Messon and the Frank Bates and the University of Minnesota, and uh, it was a theoretical phase diagram based on the experimental. Uh, phase diagram reported in 1990, I think 1993 or in that in that ranges. And uh, if you're looking at the phase diagram, the if you have a 50-50, I'm going to highlight is a lamella. So that's a that's a uh, reasonable phases to to think about lamella. This is a lamella phases where you you have a composition is essentially symmetric. So this is where the your domains are essentially pretty much the half and half. So when you have an equal length of, of those, you have a lamella structures. And then there are regions for 
the cylinder faces, which is uh, which is shown up here. And if you look at the cylinder from the side, it is on hexagonally packed cylinders. So they use the symbol sometimes H E X. That's hexagonally packed cylinder with the cylinders uh, kind of going this way. <laughs> so if you look at the cross section, you can certainly make a note that okay, this is a the lattice structure is hexagonal. Okay, so these are the hexagonal packing of cylinders, and so that's why it's called a hex. And you you do see that. So this is a more like uh, two layer like structures for the lamella, and uh, the which is a two dimensional building block, and uh, the more linear one dimensional line like structure, which is a cylinder when a hexagonal packing. So the hexagonal pack cylinders is about thirty percent composition here. Okay, so that's a hexagonal, and uh, it it is a symmetric. So because this is a theoretical diagram and that assume that uh, all the molecular prop properties such as a, for example statistical segment lengths and um, those are the quite um, they are the same kind of rigidity of the polymer chains and so on and the last one in the if you if you kind of think about in the same trend this is a body center cubic which is a spherical structures, right? For body central cubic, they call it a BCC, and which is right here. That's about, let's say, 15 to 10 percent okay, uh, of an A, and then you will see that. And then there is a, some uh, interesting kind of a phases they, they find out, which is learned from the, uh, uh, the surfactant uh, studies in, in, in the historically before. This is a bicontinuous, we call this one as a gyroid structure, gyroid structure, and this is the name it. And then this has a very unique uh, features, such as, um, I mean, it's, it's like a small cylinders are branching out into two, and this is branching out in two, but they are kind of twisted so that they, they kind of make up the whole structures, and they are, they are different form of the gyro structure people are kind of the, uh, talking about. So these are the where the gyro structures are. And that's so by continuous structures, and it has a lot of interest, not only for fundamental, but also technical application because of the continuities for making a continuous pore structures and so on. <laughs> Here is a uh, different version. So, uh, I mean, this is uh, uh, Eric Cochran uh, with uh, Glenn Fredrickson. They made a, a theoretical phase diagram, uh, a little bit uh, later version. As you can see, that the one before was up to 80, but now he calculated up to 100, and then he kind of show uh, this pocket of Q230, which is a Q the gyro structure, uh, is kind of the has a developed a pocket and then it's narrowed down, but can it, it persists up to the for much higher cayenne? Okay, old picture was more like a, there is a lamella phase, and then there is a gyro phase developed and kind of decayed away, and you don't you don't theoretically you don't see this as a gyro structures and lamella in between, and that's just a focusing on the the middle portion on here. But now this is an old, and this is a new, and then now the newer picture in the this recently uh, reported by the Glenn Fredrickson at UC Santa Barbara, and that he this is the one that gyro structure persists to exist as a with a definite window on on there. So that's the at the, even the what we call the this is a strong segregation limit. And other than that, I, I also here provided to you once more as a recap. When you have a 50-50, uh, it's a lamella phase, 30% A, cylindrical phase, 10% A. This is a spherical phase and with a body center cubic, and that's the uh, phase by like phase behavior. I also, uh, uh, this is a picture from the textbook, so I wanted to show you the example. <clears throat> the transmission electron microscopy is uh, quite well used in the 
in the block of polymer field, and as you can see, that A is a poly polystyrene, polybutadiene styrene ABA tri block, uh, but their uh, average composition about 50 50, right? So, this is a case where FA of us about 0.45, which is a lamella structures, and as you can see here. And that's the structures. And uh, the other one is, uh, this is a block of polymer of styrene, isoprene styrene, uh, SB, SIS, tri-block of polymer. And their poly, polymer A fraction is about 0.33. And this is an ABA, and tri-block of polymer. And the reason is because uh, it's, uh, this polymer is uh, actually over commercial interest, so there's a lot of more uh, studies has been done at that time, and this this uh, uh, this is a gyroid structure uh, first identified by T E M, and this is by the Edwin Thomas at MIT uh, when he was at MIT. Now he is currently at Rice University. This one is almost looks like a hexagonal, but it has a little different feature. So it has, looks like a wagon wheel type structures, and it has a very distinct. Uh, TEM structures, and then uh, people later will find conclude that this is a, a gyro structure. And the cylindrical structures is a uh, polystyrene for the one has a 30 30 percent, and depending on the orientation uh, on that, you can see that. So this is about polystyrene. Uh, this is a styrene isoprene uh, styrene, but it's a star. Uh, polymer, but 30%, right? 30% polystyrene. So now you can see that this white domain is a polystyrene. This is a unstained. And this dark domain here, which is a matrix here, that's a polyisoprene, which is a stained. Stained uh, here by osmium tetroxide, to give out more higher electron density, that's why you appear as a as a black one. So that's the one in the shown in the figure, eighteen point nine. The the matrix or the the dark region is a polybutadiene, or well, isoprene, and the bright region is unstained polystyrene, and you can see that as well. Okay, and. Also, not only polystyrene, uh, the the TM transmission electron microscopy is used because you need to scan it. They also can use a, what is called a small angle X-ray scattering. Okay, small angle X-ray scattering, and the, the Q ranges here. You remember the Q that we we talked about? Q is a one over length scale. And the one over length scale, and that, that's the length scale above here. And then when they see these peak patterns, that looks like they call it a primary peak as a Q star. And this is a secondary peak, which in the order of 2 Q star, 3 Q star, 4 Q star. And at that position, if you see that. And then, then that's, that's the that's a, a indication of diffraction pattern of the lamella structures. <laughs> And then what uh, people can do is they look at here, and that's about 0.25, right? So Q star is 0.25, 1 over nanometer. And then the domain spacing, which is called uh, the D, or sometimes they call it L, and that's uh, 2 pi over Q star. And if you if you take it out and then the, take take out the calculators and put it in the numbers, you will find that twenty five nanometers. So that's the domain spacing that you can get this quantitative information. So what that means is the distance from here to another one. So that's, that's, that's uh, this, this thickness here is equal to D, okay? So that's a periodicity of the lamella spacing. So that's lamella spacing. 
And one other thing that you can you notice, do you remember the radius of gyration is scaled to the molecular weight to the 0.5? Or I will say that's the that's how the really the Gaussian chain. And the uh, block of polymer people measure actually how the domain spacing scale with the molecular weight for symmetric polymer. Okay, when you have a uh, then you essentially that is from the lamella basis. This domain spacing. Let me do, let me just just change that. I think that I'll, I like to call it for because of this lamella. I want to change this one to L. Okay, L, lamella, lamella, lamella periodicity, the L. And this one is essentially 2 over 3. So that means uh, this is uh, uh, M to the 0 0.67, which is uh, bigger than 0 0.5, right? So what that means is in the chain that is a Gaussian chain, they are more like, like this, whereas uh, here you are f forcing this chain to the interfaces and they're kind of stretched out, right? These are the chains that are stretched out from the interfaces. So therefore it's a, a little stretching, stretch, stretch, chain conformation. And that's, that has been known for, for my experiment also has been verified by the theory. The lamella thickness is a little bit more uh, depending on the molecular weight than the just a no normal Gaussian chain. And then it, it was pushed a little bit uh, further, and this is a review paper by Frank Page and Glenn Fredrickson, who wrote uh, uh, many versions of the review papers, and that was in 1999. And they'll talk about a B dibloc copolymer phase diagram. We know it by for, for many, many uh, regions. Uh, we know this kind of, that's a dibloc polymer, but they are interested in uh, addressing this additional complexity. What about if you add a third block making ABC tri-block polymer? It is a very complicated system. It has been pioneer, pioneered by the, uh, the German uh, polymer chemist, uh, Raymond Stedler, uh, which is shown at the bottom. So let me show the Lyman Stedler's uh, the, the diagram here. This is uh, one of the ABC uh, uh, tri-block polymer that's a starin. Uh, that is a, this is a polysarin and ethylene butylene MMA tri-block polymer. So that's, uh, that's what they have made here. That's a PE. PS, PEB, and PMMA. And uh, what you see here is a polystyrene and the PMMA form this, uh, this kind of the layer-like structures. If you blow it up, and this is uh, what, what they looks like. So if I, if I color them, uh, okay, if I color, color the polystyrene, Domains, uh, they kind of going through the strut. That's what polystyrene looks like. And uh, whereas a poly PMMA is going to go through something like like this domain. Okay, that's, that's more like a PMMA domain. And the matrix is more like a polyethylene butylene. So polyethylene butylene is more like matrix. So this is a very complicated structure. As This is what they call the kneading structures. Uh, this is a, a very intriguing um, morphologies uh, they actually introduced. And then at that time that they essentially shows what known to be the force you know, before AB dye block. We know that it is a lamella, cylinders, spheres, and the gyroid. Okay, those are the four structures that you, you know, but now the s layer structure can form this tri-layer structures. Cylinder structures, they can form more like a cylinder with a B is on the wedding layer, or the, the B is actually collapsed, 
forming this uh, deck uh, at the interfaces of AC or AC layers, right? So thinking about this, this is a complex morphologies, and some of the experiments. Uh, this is actually one of the domain structure that has been observed by the, the St Raman Stedler group before, and they actually uh, talk about some kind of the generic. Uh, Older structures, and if you look at the G, this is very similar to sodium chloride roxol structures, and so they they start to argue that uh, the complex morphology, and we uh, there's uh, many groups are still pursuing in this route. This is actually the polystyrene isoprene two binary pyridine, and the polystyrene is is a bright. Isoprene is osmium tetroxide, stained. Which is a, uh, which is a uh, dark, and the poly two binary pyridine. Bi poly two binary pyridine is looks like this. Okay, and then this is a uh, iodine stained, which is uh, not as strongly strained compared to osmium, so it looks like a gray. You can see this. You are seeing this the, the structure looks like that, and, and that's so uh, that's the one actually I made it when I was doing my postdoc at this is Santa Barbara. Okay, so I talked about some phase behavior, and then the if you can see this, all the length scale is in the ranges about you know 20 nanometers, and that's pretty common 20 30 nanometers periodicity, and people I envision that this is uh, something as a building block. Uh, to make the block of polymer and using understanding the phase behavior is uh, essentially the uh, was established in the early 1990s and then these days a lot more people are interested in studying their phase behavior based on the uh, ut utilizing their uh, order structure in the nanoscale for making some uh, nanomaterials.